Hello and welcome to my channel. Um, today we're going to be looking into the disappearance of Crystal Risinger, and hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. And she is very beautiful. So, and it says that she moved to Crestone, Colorado. So I pulled up some map images of that. And you can see how small it is. It says there was only 141. The population was only 141 people in the 2020 census. So, and then I pulled up another map so you can see what it looks like with the trees or shrubbery or whatever. So there's a hardware, there's a town park, there's a brewing company. And then when you go to zoom out, you can see the surroundings. So that is where she disappeared from. So who knows, right? Yeah. So let's see what it has to say on Wikipedia. It says Crystal Ann Reisinger is a resident of Crestone, Colorado, which has, who has been missing since July 13, 2016. She was a mother of one, and she relocated to Crestone from Denver in order to achieve enlightenment and sobriety. While in Crestone, she temporarily worked at the Crestone Brewing Company. Her last known confirmed sighting was on July 13th at her residence in downtown Crestone, but some have stated seeing her at a later date. In 2018, the sheriff's office and Colorado Bureau of Investigation now believe foul play was the cause of her disappearance. An Arizona native, Risinger was located, relocated to Denver to be with her aunt after a difficult childhood upbringing. The arrangement became strained, leaving Risinger as a ward of the court at the age of 15. At this time, Risinger moved in with Rodney and Debbie Irvin after dating their son. Thereafter, Risinger spent a few years with the Irvins before attending Western State College in Gunnison, where she met her best friend, Michael. During the summer vacations from college, she would live with Michael's family, and after college, she remained living between Michael's family and the Irvins. In 2014, Risinger moved from Denver to Gunnison, Colorado, teaching a course and taking coursework in psychology and sociology at Western Colorado University. Later that spring, she moved to Crestone and so it says she's a very spiritual person with interest in Hinduism, Buddhism, and Native American religion. She also practiced teratology and claimed to be clairvoyant and a medium. She has, own, she has one daughter with her former boyfriend. The Sequatchie County Sheriff's Office was notified of Crystal's prolonged absence by her landlord on July 13, 2016. Once inside the apartment, investigators found Crystal's cell phone and her medication, and numerous Crestone residents claimed to have seen her at something called a full moon drum circle gathering the night of July 18, 2016. McDonald and multiple sources claim that the last person to have called Ressinger is a local man with a criminal history involving drugging and assaulting victims. <clears throat> So, and there's a $20,000 reward that's been issued for any information leading to the arrest and conviction of those responsible for her disappearance. <coughs> Beginning in August 2018, the podcast Up and Vanished focused on the case in its second season. So let's see what they have on Reddit. And this person posted, in order to reach the end, we must start at the very beginning. Her beginning throughout the countless items I read is not addressed as though it's significant. The first, that's the first clue. In order to seek the truth of her disappearance, we must travel in a downward spiral through time well before she was even born. <clears throat> the only way to explain this truth spiral is to fall through the hole like Alice in Wonderland. The more unbelievable and nonsensical 
the path the closer you are to finding the truth. First, I'd like to say she was exceptionally talented right from the go. She could sing, speak, and see as though she had lived and lived so many lives and thus did so tenderly from nearly her very first breath. She was a true original, and what is most remarkable is she shimmered and shined without anyone around to buffer her talents. We both did, whoever wrote this. Her blood generally inclined to hold so much power. However, she was self-made. I'm not going to lie as kids. We were so haunted walking a tightrope of despair, poverty, and responsibility. But we made it. Well, kind of. To those who know the riddles and rhymes I am forced to speak in, we are being hunted some secrets are best to remain secret. Our lineage, our lineage depends on it. The bounty for us is so high, the very people we've trusted and cherished our whole lives could turn a, a dime on us at, oh, I guess I think that's supposed to say, could turn on a dime on us at any moment. Boy, does that sting out. The only place for us to hide is in plain sight, quoting the Simpsons and watching the Super Bowl. The government is hunting us too, along with an army of darkness whom traded their souls long ago. Stay true and grow the sacred tree within the shadows of the illumination we possess. Stay hidden. The only advice need shed upon your path lies in the blood of your ancestors that already flows through your veins. You just got to reach inside and ask them to guide you, just like water, blood carries memory. Stay safe out there. Cheers to you, sweetheart. Wherever it is we end up going, take care of my little brother just as you did when we were kids. I imagine he's afraid. Hold him for me till I get there. Oh, that's sad. I think that's kind of beautiful. Anyway... What else does it say on Reddit? This one says, I read an article yesterday about her disappearance of the disappearance of Crystal Reisinger, a missing mother from Colorado. And since I haven't seen any mention of her sad case here, I wanted to talk about it. I have never done a long write-up style post, so I'll be summarizing parts of the article below. It says, how can someone disappear in a town of 143 people? And that is a good question. It says, that's a question I keep coming back to after reading the story of Crystal's disappearance. Crystal moved from Denver to a small town named Crestone. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. For a spiritual enlightenment and often participated in local ceremonies. She's been missing since July 13th, 2016. And this is actually July 30th. So near the mountains is the Great Sand Dunes National Park. And generally the area surrounding Crestone is considered sacred ground by the Navajo Nation. Crestone has a reputation as a new age religious capital. So it seems fitting why Crystal chose to move there. Most of the roads leading from the town lead to a temple, sect, or religious compound. She wanted to find peace and happiness out there in a place connected with nature and long-standing native traditions. Her ex-boyfriend said that she was really into Native American traditions and the nature of raising consciousness and living a peaceful life. Her motto was do no harm. She had moved into a centrally located apartment roughly a month before she disappeared. Neither her friends nor family had heard from her since she moved, which was thought to be very unusual. One of her friends, who had supported her when she left home after a falling out with her mother, Rodney Irvin, went by her apartment to check on her. He found freshly bought veggie burgers, almond milk, shampoo, conditioner, and medicine that was being used regularly. Apparently, there was no sign in her apartment of anything amiss or an attempt to leave. The Saguache County Sheriff was a bit skeptical at first because Crystal had gone on a two-week walk about before, so his first guess was that she was simply doing something similar. However, those who knew her were worried about another matter entirely. Crystal has a four-year-old daughter from her ex named Kasha. She called her daughter nearly every day and night since moving to Creston in order to keep in touch with her. She wouldn't suddenly just drop communication. The only clue that the sheriff's office has about her whereabouts 
is that her last sighting was at a local drum circle ceremony. I had no clue what this was, but the article summarizes it as follows. Held on the night of a full moon, it's a religious ceremony and a wild party held at a campground on the outskirts of town. Crystal's landlord said that she had been going to drum circles and partying lately, as well as bringing back sketchy people into the apartment. The other tenants had complained about the random people. The last time Erin McDonald, the landlord, went to get money from Crystal, she saw her crying and saying she wasn't sure what had happened at the ceremony, but that someone had taken advantage of her. She advised Crystal to tell the police which Crystal was thinking over, but before she had a chance, she vanished. After Crystal's disappearance, her landlord found her dead phone and charger in the apartment. From her messages, she determined that Crystal had been trying to go somewhere before she disappeared, but it's not clear where. The last person who call called Crystal has a felony criminal history of assaulting and drugging a victim. Presumably, the sheriff's office is still investigating this man as they have released no other information. They are pretty certain now that it is due to foul play as she left all of her possessions behind and the lack of contact is uncharacteristic for Crystal. The area near Crestone is remote, vast, and mountainous, so it would be difficult to find a body without knowing exactly where to search. So, what happened to Crystal? She was looking for a spiritual peace and growth, but it seems like she only managed to land herself in something possible, possibly fatal and harmful. There is also a possibility that she simply managed to wander off and lose a battle against nature, but the evidence definitely seems to point to a suspicious person. I can't get over how tiny this town is and how she disappeared. Everyone knows everyone. Someone who was at the drum circle, they know what happened to her or has heard something, but they won't come forward. It's a very sad case for Crystal's friends and family, and especially her young daughter who doesn't understand why her mother hasn't called her or is not coming home. So, yeah. And this says, I happen to have moved from Crestone and I'm quite familiar with this story. I lived in the middle of nowhere right outside of it. I liked the town at first. It's quaintly cute, very chilled out and hip at first glance. But after a bit, people start to talk. It's a town where everybody knows everybody, Within the first week up there, I had stopped to read a missing poster with a very strikingly pretty girl on it. My mom filled me in on the rest. It was Crystal's missing poster. I couldn't stop thinking about her while I was out there. She is there somewhere. I know it. But as to alive, I get the chills. As you said, it's surrounded by vast emptiness and wilderness. I like Crestone, but there are some serious drug issues there. And people really like to take advantage of each other if you are not really careful. One of my few visits in town, we came across a semi-secluded road where a group of young adults were screwing around on the side of the road. No big deal. But a few feet up, there is a dude clearly tripping balls with the creepiest look on his face. I later was informed he was one of the guys who went to the drum circles and then was warned to not attend these drum circles. There's supposed to be a spiritual kind of relaxa relaxation event, but when you get warned to steer clear of these places, you do so. I hear the drum circle is up near the woods someplace, never attended myself, but know people who had been around Crystal at points in time, as well as knowing people who knew possible suspects, small towns man. So, yeah. And so that's what it has on her that I could find. Anyway, there's probably more information. Maybe you've heard more information. If you have more information, please share it in the comments. And what are your thoughts? What do you think happened to her? She looks so beautiful. And do you think they'll ever find out who did it? Or do you think anybody will ever be charged? It's just so sad. I mean, there she is sitting there crying and then she's never heard from or seen again. So, and you would think in a small town like that, that it would be safe. But I thought I read somewhere that someone had died the year before at the same, I don't know if it was the year before, but 
at around the same time of the year, somebody else had went missing, but I didn't, I don't see it, so I'm not positive. I, but you know, if you have thoughts, I mean, look at this. Do you think she's going to be found? I don't know. So, and do you think anybody will ever be charged? Hopefully they get charged. If they don't get charged for that, hopefully they get charged for something else. And they just go away for a long, long time. So, but it's sad because, you know, her, her child has to grow up without a mother now. So, and that's, that's very sad for her. And she had such a, a rough life, such a rough life. And here she moves to this very, very small town where you would think that she would be safer and she would have a better life, you know, but no, it just ends in tragedy. So anyway, <laughs> anyway, anyhow, please feel free to leave comments because I appreciate your comments and your thoughts. And um, don't forget to pray for her family and her loved ones and her child and the people that are still living in that town. And, you know, hopefully that other people are safe. Anyway, I thank you so much for tuning in and have a great day. Bye bye.